this interview landed on our lap a little bit. His team just happened to fly into Perth, but I'm very excited to have this chat. Ben, mm-hmm. I had him on my list. We've got a little list here. Yep. I'd say this man would be right on it. Adam Trelaw <laughs> joins us on Back Chat. G'day, mate. How are you? Welcome. Good. Thank you for having me. It's, um, yeah, I'm very excited to be here. As you said, it kind of landed in our lap and uh, yeah. flown in last night and now I'm here. Good now, thing was that we didn't have to do it at the airport. We didn't have to meet you guys at the, <laughs> yeah, at the airport not. and harass you there. We should start doing that, actually. Anyway, um, <laughs> right, yeah, we didn't, no, no door stopping here. So now we know what sort of football player you are, right? You've won Anzac Day medals. You've been rising star nominees. You've, you've done well and best and Ferris, you've uh, like you've played over 200 games with three clubs. Like we know all that. You're a good footballer. You've had 40 touches in a game, which is probably usually take maybe a season to get through. But right for the start, I'm going to say I don't care. Right, mm-hmm. I do. But we're going to get into that a little bit later. The yep. first question we ask every guest: We want to know your greatest sporting achievement. Okay. Not not on the football field. Not footy. We know you're a good footballer. Okay, it's very clear, very okay. evident. Okay, but I want to know your greatest That's sporting achievement. Here. Not um, on the football field. I think – so I love basketball. I love the NBA. I love the NFL. But yes. um, I'm probably better at uh, shooting a basketball than I am um, kicking a footy and, and handballing a footy. So um, helping hoops down in Melbourne for the Nike – there's like a Nike event that they do. Yeah. Um, there was like a – it's like a, a, a fundraiser for money. You go and shoot free throws and you shoot around and, and players come down, footballers, basketballers, and they have this leaderboard and um, – when they first did it, I think it was back in 2018 or 19, I went down there and um, you get 15 minutes to shoot as many free throws as possible. Yes. Um, and obviously, as I said, it raises money, but you've got people there rebounding for you and you're just shooting for 15 minutes and there's a leaderboard. And That's a long time. It's a long time. Um, and, yeah, I actually broke the record. So I had the, uh, I had the record. I think the record prior to was Chris Golding. Um, well, you beat an NBL Yeah, player. I broke the record. And I remember – I remember um, – one of the people rebounding was a um, Melbourne United like recruiter, kind of must have been an underage, but he asked me, you know, where I played, what I did, this and that. Are, are you willing to come and shoot? And I'm like, mate, I've never played, I've actually never played basketball. How old were you? I was only five years ago. So <laughs> I think you were like a 15. No, 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 no. The thing is, I loved basketball so much that I kind of taught myself how to shoot. I used to just watch basketball all the time and um, I've got a, you know, I, I went and spent like 20 grand to get a outdoor basketball, um, yeah, your professional hoop in my backyard. So at home. It's the dream. You know, there's a setup here. You've got your podcast set up here. It's absolutely elite. Mine is my basketball hoop. So <laughs> I go there and yeah, just shoot all the time. So that's probably my greatest achievement outside of footy. That's what, good. Where do you put the footy set up or are you just like focusing on the nah, I just take it back seat. I, um, <laughs> I, I go out and quite often every two or three weeks go and buy a new basketball just so I can have plenty in the background <laughs> up and shoot. So, do you have one of those things that like rebounds for you? You know what? I actually thought about getting one, but um, there probably wouldn't be enough room for me. And yeah. I... Um, I pride myself on on going and getting the ball, coming back, shooting, going and getting the ball, coming back, shooting, rather than just throwing to me. So, yeah, I um, yeah, that's probably my little that's achievement that's that I've done. Good. I think, for what it's worth, my record has been broken. I didn't, I didn't, I haven't been back since. But um, when people go there, they see the the record and they want to try and beat it. So, of course. I think a development player for the Melbourne United ended up beating my record. So. Um, no, I was a little bit salty about that, so I probably might go back there, but yeah. yeah. You've got to have a chance to defend your title. <laughs> yeah, I do. Adam Trelaw, one of the most prolific <laughs> ball winners of the modern era. <laughs> also a good free throw. Doesn't, <laughs> just, just buys himself new basketball every two weeks. He's playing in boots that are just like <laughs> five years old. Don't worry about that. Mate, that's very good. Yeah, Dan, that's Dan actually favorite. took uh, five for 16 in a yeah. grand final under really? 12s. Really? Um, yeah. Chewed Hill Cricket. That's the, that's the ball from that day. Uh, was that was that was a uh, under nines 80 metre hurdle champion, um, state champion actually. Didn't quite make it to national level, but you, you've got us probably both covered. Now, um, let's go all the way back. We yeah. want to ask a couple more questions off the top. So, um, back chat proudly powered by Fleet Network this year. Thank you very much, Fleet Network. Mm. When I ask about your first car, do you remember your first car? Yeah, I do. What was I it? I do. Um, it was like a champagne coloured Ford Falcon <laughs> from, uh, I think it was 2008, maybe. Wow. Yeah, I bought it in 2011. Yes. So, did you have it? No, you bought it up in Sydney then? Yeah, so I got drafted when I was 17, so I didn't have a car. Um, you know, I couldn't afford anything prior to getting drafted. I had no, didn't have a job or anything, and mum couldn't afford to get me a car. So I um, waited for my first couple of paychecks and ended up getting my licence. And, um, and that's what you've gone with. Yeah, when I bought a champagne. Did you request champagne or was that no, what I didn't. Was on the so line? what happened is uh, one of my great mates, Craig Lambert, who was our, um, he was like our welfare person who looked after us, he, um, you know, 
as a 17 year old kid, didn't know what to do. I said, mate, I just want a car. Can you help me get a car? I need to learn it. And he went out and got us, I think three of us had a champagne Ford Falcon. <laughs> one of our team. Bog, bog one, yes, we did. One of our teammates at the time, Sam Daly, he went and got the same thing as well. So, yeah, that was my first car. That is unreal. <laughs> champagne. That's very Yeah, good. I gave it to my brother as a, I actually gave it to my older brother as a, um, not a gift, but just I went and bought, I upgraded a few years later and he ended up selling it. <laughs> within so, months. Yeah, within he ended months. up selling it within months. So I, um, yeah, that was my first car. There you go. Still that's, going champagne on the car good. or have you moved No, on? no, no, no. Okay. The white and black colours, they're the colours that I go with now, but not <laughs> champagne. So you mentioned getting picked up in 2010 as, a, as an underage, you were effectively an underage draftee, right? Yep. So was that before GWS was in the AFL? <laughs> Yeah, so they they were um, a TAC Cup team, which is the under eighteen program down in um, in Melbourne. Um, they competed for a year in that, and then did you play in that? Nah. So they I played against them. So for Danong Stingrays was my team. Um, there was Josh Bruce was playing at the time. Alex Carey was playing at the time. He obviously now plays obviously for the Australian cricket side. So yes. um, yeah, they, what they pretty much had was a um, you know twelve picks uh, for underage players who turned eight, uh, 17 between um, January and, and April and I was one of the 12, 17 year olds they requested and um, I really had no choice. Um, so they told me in March of 2010 that into th- in September they're going to announce that I'm getting drafted and then I had to f- essentially move up in November. So you so, knew right. for six months playing. Yeah, all of us knew. So all the 12 kids that were getting drafted, we all knew. So we were playing our last tack-up year as bottom ages, knowing we were getting... What did that feel like? Oh, yeah, it was... I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. It was it was just all such a blur for me. Um, I just remember my mum... I remember getting a call from Gubby Allen. He was our um, our boss at the time telling us, and he pretty much said, well, well done, you're getting drafted. And I got off the phone and told mum, and <laughs> mum started crying. I was like, oh, what should I do now? So then I just went and I called a couple of my mates, and we just went and hung out and actually went and had a kick of the footy at the park, and, and I just went to school the next day. It was just kind of <laughs> like that. There was no, you know, getting ready for the draft or whatever it may be. It was just preparing myself for six months to, um, you know, to eventually move to Sydney and, and play. All right. Wow. So it wasn't like a confidential thing. You were allowed to, you know. No, no. So we were told, and then – Pretty much within the week, it was announced in the right. in the Herald Sun or whatever it was, the paper, and mm. um, then I had to continue training for the Stingrays. And how did you know, how playing. did Year Twelve go? In, King, uh, King of the to school? be totally honest with you, no, I um I actually didn't finish. There you go. So it was the end of the first term, and um, my plan initially, because I was um, you know born between Jan and and April, as I said, I went to school early, so. I was essentially one, always the young kid in school. So yeah. I was planning to – because I was never the best at school. I was just always so sport-focused um, and I um, I never really gave it my best, which I wish I did at the time. Um, and my plan was to, to forego that year, have a year of just playing footy and then – go to a footy school with all my mates the following year who are my age. That was genuinely my plan. And then GWS told me they were drafting me and um, that plan went out the window because I was like, well, I just want to play professional <laughs> sport. But um, you know, I eventually just said to the school, look, I, um, you know, it's not working for you. What it's not working for me. What are we doing here? What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> I'm just going to finish. And um, and they were very supportive. And, you know, Dandong High School is where I went. They've um, they've got alum, past alumni there and they're proud to hang my jersey up and whatnot considering awesome. I didn't finish. So... I'm um, very proud to have gone there. Very good. That's well, good. It's turned, out, turned out all right. Yeah, it has. They have like an Adam Trelaw sort of wing or something at the school? <laughs> no, nah, there's actually trophy. no footy over there. Oh, yeah, right. they, they've prioritised their academics, which is fine because um, <laughs> cause they've actually, they're, they're always in the top 10 public schools, you know, yearly in, in Victoria. Oh, so, yeah. so this is why they'll have to get yeah, rid of it. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh, we don't the so we, we're good enough. <laughs> I take pride in actually being on the Wikipedia page. I actually <laughs> see. Oh, yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> I, it would have been last year. I, was, I just wanted to see if they actually really did care and I looked on the Wikipedia page and, my name was actually there, which is pretty you, cool. You put it on there? Right? <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I don't know what's happening with Az's mic, but it's just been a bit funky. It keeps like <laughs> yeah, okay. Let me just have a little play. If, if if you, a little. Damn, if you just mute his mic, uh, I'll just have a play. You, you yeah. talk. Yeah, okay. I can talk a little bit. I'm going to talk about um, – so that's you getting picked up as an underage. We had Charlie Dixon that was, I think, in the same sort of spot at Gold Coast, right? So I think our listeners have had a chat about that. I want to speak to you about um, – you get picked up. That was lucky that lid was on, Dan. You get picked up as an underage. You play, um, you know, tack up footy. You get to the footy club. Um, I think that's a little bit better if you unmute him. <laughs> um, nice padding, Scoey. You get picked up as a 17-year-old. When you get to Sydney, who picked you up from the airport? Do you remember? Yeah, so Craig Lambert, Tony Shepherd, who was the boss. Yes. He's the, the, the head honcho. Um, there was about five of us 
Victorians who are moving up, so Dylan Shield, Tim Golds, a couple others, and um, Israel Folau as well. He was a yeah. part of the group. Yeah, so then, I, I, for some reason someone told me yeah. that Izzy Folau Izzy was Folau. in yep. the bunch. He was. He um, First time I met him and I took a liking to him straight away, we, um, we, we hit it off straight away and then we went to Brecky Point. We weren't told who we were living with or whatnot until that day. Um, and I, um, yeah, was told I was moving in with 80, his name's 80 Schwegler. He, uh, he's still the property guy at the Giants now. Um, he'd spent 10 years at the Bombers. Schwegs. Schwegs. His nickname is Schwegs. <laughs> no doubt. Hey, like, don't even know Schwegs. Um, and Izzy. So the three of us moved in together. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so Breck, like, yeah, yeah. Breaky Point was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That That's was like, that was, that was like a, it was like, a, like, like an apartment complex for you blokes. Well, it was, yeah. So I, I was having this discussion with, um, Brucey the other day because obviously we we always talk fondly of those times because um, it seriously felt like for a year that we were just on a training camp and we mm. spent – well, two years really because we lived there um, – our first year there we were playing in the NEFL, which is I think non-existent now. It used to be um, the NEFL now, it's just the VFL um, competition. But all the Canberra-based sides and Sydney-based sides played in the NEFL. We spent a year there and we lived at Breakfast Point. It was like a – a training camp and then the following year our first AFL year we still live there so you know Chad Corns moved over Dean Brogan um, Luke Power Campbell James Brown? McDonald no, nah, no not Campbell Brown. he was Gold Coast we had all That's these great. absolute superstars in in, in there That's well right. they were still stars they all moved there as well and you know I cannot even imagine what they were thinking about these 18 year old kids <laughs> you know living in this essentially it's a retirement home area for a lot of people that come and want to retire because it's a beautiful area and, and these troublemaker kids that are getting up to no good as 18 year olds um you know living in these apartment blocks it was pretty crazy think back so you get through those year you debut in 2012 round three against the eagles against yes. the eagles there's yes. a lot mate doing a bit yes. of research there's a lot of crossover between you and yeah, i there is there so is. i played in that game i oh, did you? Yeah, i gotta be honest oh, no. i remember much about you we won by 90 <laughs> i think you're i think it was I always say this. I think it was seventy to six at quarter time. Were you playing oh. on Luke Shuey at any stage? Because I think you kicked no, five goals. No, I did, and I was a winger quarter. then. You kicked five in the first. I remember, <laughs> mate. I remember it like yesterday. Nick Nat knew he was dominating. I just all I remember is from that game. Um, you know, we were down, as you said, we lost by ninety, but it was legit seventy to six at quarter time. We were getting spanked, and I remember it. We, we pegged it back a bit. You did to, well. To you eighty. Were, I'm sure you. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. you like one quarter. Yeah, we, we won a couple quarters. I thought we were going to win by four hundred. <laughs> yeah, so did I. But, um, I remember. I think going just right up to the three quarter time, there was a centre bounce clearance. I think Shuey got it out and kicked it to someone. Chad Corns' man. I just remember <laughs> Chad Corns Corns <laughs> taking his mouth, going out. <laughs> Throwing it on the ground and just abusing all of us 18 year old midfielders. <laughs> you know, rightfully so, because I feel sorry for him because he's come across Premiership Play All Australia yeah. and he's thinking, what, what have I, I got myself into? So, <laughs> yeah, that's that as was, good as it gets. That was as good as it got. Yeah. Mate, I played on Izzy Flower. I literally played on Izzy. And look, I mean, Izzy was swapping codes. Like, it would be just like me going to play rugby league. Yeah, like, yep. a, like, a bit of a fish out of water, f- first time. And um, I tried to take him on an attack, and he tackled me. And I was, Good. I was like, I will not ever be doing that ever again. It's yeah, one that, thing he knew how to do was. Tackle. Well, that was his. That was probably his two good things was being able to tackle, and I think his tackling ability was really good as well. I think, um, sorry, his marking ability was really good as well. Yeah. He was very um, in the NRL early. That was probably yeah. one of his strengths as a winger. Um, and what people probably forget is his best game, in my opinion, was his last game, and that was against North. We played it. Um, yeah, at Skoda Stadium at the time and, and it was against North Melbourne and um, yeah he, it was his best game by a mile I think he had 15 or 20 touches and score involvement kicked two goals and then obviously in the off season he retired um, and I genuinely believe if he stuck at it he could have you know had a pretty decent career for, for someone who hadn't grown up playing the sport but um, he obviously ended up having a you know really good career in, in what he chose to do mm-hmm. Kevin you- Sheedy your, your first coach yeah he was yes and Alan McConnell Yes, right? Alan McConnell and, and Choco Williams. Um, right. They were the three and uh, more so Choco. Choco was probably our, our first introduction to senior footy coaching and, right. yeah, it's very intimidating times with Choco. He, that's, um, a, that's a trio, mate. So Alan McConnell coached me at uh, yeah. College in 2006. Yep. So I know Al. <laughs> Cameron Sheedy I've known, got to know him afterwards and yep. he's an intimidating figure. He he's one of the greatest of all time. Yep. And Choco... Um, told me that I'd never play <laughs> AFL footy in my first draft. <laughs> draft Plenty of people that. Yeah, correct. Yes, yes. So I can imagine as a young kid, like, although exciting, like that's an intimidating Oh, dream. mate, we, um, yeah, we we had some early days. It was very tough for a lot of us 18, 17, 18 year olds because, you know, we're, um, you know, for Choco, he expects, you know, excellence and, 
he, he f- wants people to be kind of the same and that's, you know, footy, 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 just want to learn and this and that. And the reality is, is a lot of us, you know, a lot of us weren't like that. We, we come up, we've been, you know, the best players in our programs. We're, we're the top 17, 18 year olds in the country. You know, a lot of us had that mindset that um, we kind of know what, what's best when we weren't willing to learn. And, um, you know, Choco quickly got that out of us. And, you know, if it wasn't for him early days and, and the stuff that he taught me, there's no way I would have lasted this long and, really? and been able to play, I get, I guess, at the high level for as long as I have. Um, you know, the, the stuff that he taught me early days, yeah, something that I appreciate. And, and to this day when I see him, um, and, and obviously he's still at Melbourne, I see him on the boundary line, wherever I run into him, I always give him a big hug and, you know, wish him all the best because he, um, yeah, he was enormous for my development. Did you have any sort of expectations going into that season? Like inaugural club, do you think, man, we're just going to get, we're just going to cop it all year? Or mm. I don't know, because like, you would have seen Gold Coast yeah. performance you know, in the past. Uh, it's hard because it's hard to think back, but I, yeah, I would have thought maybe winning one or two games would have been an achievement for us, which we did. We won two games. We beat Gold Coast <laughs> in round six, I think it was, and we celebrated like it was a flag. That was a great, <laughs> great night of celebrating. Um, and you beat Port. And we beat Port, yes. And, yeah, I, I think – yeah, I, I look back and think that was a big tick for us. I think the second year wasn't. Mm. We only won one game and that was until round 19. So we went from I think we beat Port in round 19 the previous year or maybe 20 and then didn't win for a whole year. So – and I think we had a bit of a setback. I think we should have probably won more than what we did in that second year. Um, so, yeah, the first year expectation was was just to play and, and maybe win one or two games, but the second year was definitely a disappointment. And then we moved on and um, Leon came in and, um, yeah, Leon is another one who was enormous for me and, and just the confidence that we had as a group. So the time you were at the Giants, like you said, two wins in the first year, second year one win, 2014 you won six wins, 2015 11 wins, so it's kind of – up. Do you look back at that, you know, start part of your career, now played at Collingwood and now at the Western Bulldogs? Like, what, what's your biggest learning? Like you said, you know, Choco Williams was great, but like what, what do you look back on through some tough times really? What do you do? Oh, the, biggest, the biggest thing that still sticks to me, and it still does to this day to now, and I'm 30 now, I, um, I just appreciate winning because having only won eight games in three years and, and coming from always winning when I was a junior and – just not being on teams that didn't win. I just appreciated winning. And and early days, you remember the teams that used to beat up on us. Um, you know, and I think back to Hawthorne just because they were so damn good. Coming over to Perth, the Freo and West Coast teams, I think my first three years playing here, we never – I think 100 points every time we played. Mm-hmm. And it was that intimidating and that daunting – that um, I just wanted to win so bad as I got older against, you know, the uh, the Perth teams, against the South Australian teams because we used to just get beat up on. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned 214. We were able to beat Sydney in round one that year, which was, you know, a significant moment in our time. Because, Huge. Yeah, there was the derby, yeah. Buddy Franklin's first game for the Sydney Swans. They, I think, played in the granny two years prior or won the granny two years prior. Yeah. That year they played in the granny. So, um, yeah, I think we were starting to – grow and, and appreciate winning a lot more. And then, again, as I got older and, and then eventually moved to Collingwood, that was something that I just wanted to do all the time. Do you think that influenced your decision to, you know, be traded, that winning element? Like, do you yeah, think yeah, no, I, I actually don't. I don't because um, the biggest thing for me was wanting to be around my family. I've always been a, a, a homebody and I've always wanted to, you know, play in front of my family and, you know, I grew up extremely close to my family. We didn't have much at all growing up and we were able to, you know, rely on each other and, and giving our, ourselves our love and support. And I wanted to be there about to support my mum. My mum was a, um, you know, she was a single mum of two kids as a 21-year-old. So she did it really tough growing up and I always wanted to be there to support her. So moving away when I was 17 was really hard, really, really hard. And um, I always said to myself that I'll find myself back to Melbourne. Um, you know, if I look back, I think, you know, I wish I could have held out a little bit longer because um, I knew that I was going to give up on – I guess, immediate success at the time because the Giants went from you know, my last year we won 11 games to playing in that prelim final against the Western Bulldogs in 16, which is arguably one of the best finals of all time. Right. Um, and I knew that I was going to give that up and it really burnt me deep down. And um, I guess the way things panned out that year, I kind of you know had to move 
at the end. But yeah, I guess if I had my time back, not that I say I wouldn't not move, but I'd try and prolong it a little bit more because it, because of the success factor. Mm. Um, but I did end up having you know great run at Collingwood, played in the grand final, obviously against you guys, we'll played in the prelim, we'll played in, yeah, I know, played in the semi, <laughs> had great success at, at Magpies. But yeah, I think I think the go home factor and being around my family and friends was was definitely the main reason. What yeah. about um, traveling, playing for uh, for GWS, and then and traveling and seeing the crowds that other teams would get, like, and then you'd go home and obviously the crowds aren't as good. Yeah. Is that like I don't know? Does that is there something you knew that, like, I want to be a part of that sort of... Um, no, to be totally honest with you, no, nah, not at all. That was never on my mind. The only time that was on my mind was was, was when I knew that I was going home. So, yeah. well, knew that I was moving to go home. Uh, prior to that, I never thought about that because I was proud to be at a footy club, being part of the foundation and establish, establishments of the footy club. I went, you know, went from being at Rudy Hill RSL, which is where we were based. We used the... You know, we used the public gym for the first two years. We we had to get a swipe card to get into the gym and we were training with, um, lo- you know, local people there that were just using the gym. I remember my first gym session, I was 17-year-old, I was 75 kilos ringing wet, I was light as all hell. And <laughs> I remember walking in and there was this guy, he was, you know, tiny, but he was built really big and You're strong. Yeah. yeah, well, he was yeah, squatting... <laughs> He was squatting somewhere between 150, 200 kilos. Yeah. And it was just, we were all watching this, like, what's going on here? And then he's supersetting that with genuinely doing backflips. <laughs> so he was squatting, <laughs> he was squatting 150, 200 kilos and then doing backflips. And I was just thinking, what, what are we doing here? Like, <laughs> so anyway, I went from that to, you know, then training out at Blacktown to then going to, you know, we, we then were at an Aths track at the Sydney Olympic Park to then our own facility. Um, you know, so I appreciated doing that and being a part of that. Um, so the, the crowd factor never really played a part until, you know, I knew that I was going home. So then it was like, well, you know, there's big clubs. I want, I want to be able to play for Collingwood. Mm. You're becoming an expert at the trade period. Like, <laughs> I am. What's, what's the, that first trade from GWS to, to Collingwood? I know at the time there was some speculation around Collingwood and Richmond. Yeah. Like what's that process like both as a GWS player? It sounds like you're really entrenched and, you know, you want to give back to that club that gave you a chance moving to a big Melbourne club, but they're two big clubs. Can you remember the, how you felt at the time? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just ready I was just ready to, to go, I guess. I think once the season finished and you had your exit interviews and, and I was, I got it in my mind that, you know, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to move on. Um, you want what's best for the footy clubs and I definitely think the Giant Giants probably got the better end because they got a couple first-round picks and some good players and that. Um, and then Collingwood unfortunately got me, but um, no, <laughs> no, nah, you were um, you were second in the best appearance yeah, yeah. at Collingwood. Correct? Yeah, no, I was. Well, I think um, that's quite good. <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, I, I think. And then you know, it's about I guess you know earning the respect. It's the old cliches, but it's quite intimidating and daunting. You know, I remember my first um, session at Collingwood in the preseason. We went from you know open sessions at the time at the Giants, which I've got no doubt have changed now. But at the time still didn't really have a fan base. Open sessions would barely get anybody where pre-season day one, there was a, you know, enormous crowd at Collingwood. There was people mm. ready to watch us train for the pre-season and we weren't even training. We were doing a time trial. So, um, yeah, and it was just the aura of it was like, wow, this is insane. And then, you know, look, earning the trust and, and being able to play with, you know, again, at the time, the Giants didn't have established players. There's no history. Um you know, you then go to Collingwood and there's Scott Pendlebury and, and Dane Swan, who's two guys that I idolised growing up. You know, Travis Cloak, still side bottom. These guys are absolute superstars of, of um, me growing up and watching these guys. Having to meet them and, and earning their trust was something that I just inspired me and wanted to do. So, um, and then running out for the first home game, which was a Collingwood-Richmond game in front of 90,000 people was, yeah, that was a pinch yourself moment. What's what's day one like at a new footy club? Like what's, what's like literally day one? Like, are you trying to figure out where to put your bag? Yeah, pretty much. Like- <laughs> who likes me, who doesn't like yeah, me? Because I've yeah. been in the system for four or five years and no doubt I was one of those um, chirpy 17-year-olds at the Giants <laughs> we had. Um, That's all right. Yeah, we, we had those. So, yeah, it's quite intimidating. But, um, you know, as I said, you just kind of put your head down and bum up and you just want to get to work. And um, as I said, we did a time trial and I just tried to run as best as I can. I've never, never really been a good time trial runner, so I didn't run that well, but... Um, you know, then try and pride yourself in the gym and, and the skills side of things. But, um, yeah, it's just quite daunting. Did I've had two quite unique experiences. Did you do anything different the second time around? Like when you're, when you're walking in the door for the first day at the Bulldogs, did you think, oh, I shouldn't have done it at Collingwood. Like, um, I shouldn't have sat in Cloakie's seat. I'm just going to play it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I'm quite um, introverted. I am. I'm, I'm actually quite introverted. So I just kind of stick to myself. So I try and, you know, I wanna, I've always wanted to be a leader by the way that I've gone about it 
my professionalism and, and um, you know, doing the right things with, you know, bringing, you know, for a little thing is bringing lunch in the club. You know, teams are used to having chefs and whatnot where I'd want to bring my own prepared lunch in or, you know, make sure I'm doing the ice bars or doing the extra plays and stretching. And that's something I always wanted to do regardless. Mm. And um, I think at the, the Maggie's because, you know, I'd done it a lot at the Giants, I went in there and I didn't want to be judged, so I didn't do it. So I was just kind of you know, floating through and doing what they were doing. And um, I then eventually learned to kind of do it my own way where the Bulldogs, I just kind of went, you know, straight ahead and, and just did what I wanted to do. And I remember the physios were saying, you know, why are you doing that? Like, well, this is kind of what I've done. This is what I do. And then kind of changed that a bit. So, yeah, I kind of was, yeah, kind of went away, went about it my own way in, in that regard. And, um, you know, I definitely think it's helped me for sure. Um, so you talk about Collingwood Richmond, day one or first game, 90,000. What's, what's the first... Anzac Day Light. Was that the same Unbelievable. year? Unbelievable, yeah, yeah. So we had – that was my biggest crowd, that game. Um, and that was, I think, when the Bombers were going through all the, you know, all the um, drug saga something. and yeah. all that stuff. So um, unfortunately we didn't have all the, you know, all the um, – Superstars. Stars right? of, yeah. of the game for them. And, and no disrespect to the players playing there at the time, but I think the game was, you know, 80 to nothing at – not nothing, but 80 to 12 maybe at halftime. So the game was essentially over. So the whole build up and everything co- was kind of out the window in that half time. Um, and it was in hard to soak it in. Did you p- the following year was extremely close. And then one of the best games of 219 was, um, yeah, that was a three point win at the end where Cal Brown got, controversially got a free kick, missed it, and the Bombers almost went the other end and kicked the goal. And we ended up winning by three. But having, you know, 92 to 93,000, you know, cheering for a close game was incredible. You've played, in, incredible. you've played in grand finals, yep. you've national anthems, you've done all that. What's what's the last post like? Unreal. Wet, yeah. Out in the middle of the J. Yeah. So how does that compare to yeah. big moments? So I, I well, I think outside of listening to the national anthem for grand final, yeah. that's definitely yeah. You, you talk about spine tingling and um, you know you kind of forget where you are for a second. You forget that you're actually playing footy and. Um, you just appreciate everything that's what's happened in, in the history of Australia and, and the New Zealand Anzacs and it's something that I definitely miss. When I knew I was leaving Collingwood, it was something that I was definitely going to miss and mm-hmm. um, one thing that I'll never, ever, ever not appreciate, the fact that I was able to play in four Anzac Day games to 221 obviously didn't go ahead because of um, COVID reasons but, yes. um, yeah, they're, they're proud moments that I look back on and the fact that I was able to win an Anzac medal is something that will always be you know, um, etched in the history of the game. So it's something I'm extremely proud of. Yeah. Does, does the really club cool. give the boys like a, is there a lot of build up internally yeah, for the Anzac yeah. Day game? Yeah. So the first year players, I'm not sure obviously now, but the first year guys and the first like year guys that have been at the club. So for instance, yeah. myself, we go um, you know, across the road to where the memorial is and, you know, we spend a couple of hours there and, and then day of the game players that aren't playing, they go to, you know, the six o'clock um, in the morning dawn memorial service. and the yep. dawn yep. service. And, yeah, it's just an um, unbelievable thing you need. To, and everyone needs to experience. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to play, again, a, a Bulldogs-Giants game in Canberra. So we went to the Canberra uh, memorial, um, you know, service, and it was really cool. It's just things that you appreciate, yeah. So the Anzac Day games are incredible. And this round is obviously Anzac Day for us. So yeah. um, it's something that I definitely appreciate playing. Do you – we had Coxie on last year, Mason Cox. Do, do you guys at Collingwood used to walk to games? Like, walk? yeah, we did. Yeah. So you yeah. did. Like, would you? I can't remember what he said. Did you warm up at the Lexus Centre and then walk? No. Across? So what? No. It kind of happened. 2018 guys um, were sick of like the traffic, yeah. and I think Pendles decided just to walk across one time, and then it just became a thing. Grand Final Day was crazy because we walked across Grand Final Day. So obviously two eighteen. I, just, I couldn't believe yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So we, it's it's good because you finish the game and um, by the time you get out, all the fans have gone. Yeah. So there's no one heckling like whether you've won or lost. But so what about coming in twenty eighteen? You're walking to the. It's grand pretty final. crazy. Yeah, we had a we had like a police um, escort and um, everyone's coming over for photos. But um, yeah, it would have been much nicer if we won. But yeah, um, it was pretty crazy walking across. Yeah, we. So the boys, yeah, boys always do it. Um, I just find that crazy. Like, yeah. How long's the walk? Oh, it takes like. Five ten minutes, uh, minutes, but the thing is, yeah. I found it like nerve settling. Mm. Um, you know, as I've gotten older, I don't get, I don't tend to get too nervous. But Do you nowadays, used ner- you used to get nervous. No, no, no. Did you used to get nervous? Used as to, young yeah, boy? a lot. Like yeah. throw up, nervous. Not that nervous, but yeah, a lot nervous. I used yeah. to have all my superstitions. I was very superstitious as a youngster. Oh, what? Oh, mate, I used to wear red jocks. Um, <laughs> Shave my legs every game day, and I used to watch The Simpsons. Same three things every game day. <laughs> the Simpsons. Yeah, it was a, it was a funny thing. The boys just always joke about it, but I stopped doing it probably oh, 
2018, and I just learned that. This isn't why I'm playing footy, <laughs> but it was just something that I used to always do. I was so... Are you, so um, you watching The Simpsons shaving your legs? Is that no, I used to shave my legs or? in the shower, and then I'd get out and just, I'd just literally watch The Simpsons. And I remember Kimmy, obviously my partner, she first time that um, we started dating, and I was six years into my career, she used to think, what are you doing? <laughs> Uh, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, I sound, um, I don't sound too bad compared to Rafael and Adele and those like. So yeah. I, I, I don't do anything like that What's anymore. What's he doing? Yeah. What's he doing? He's, he's, oh, he doesn't he, step on lines. And he's, and not, he's touching he the He does left all those flip. things where he you like know, touches his hands. And, as well. Maybe we should yeah. all be doing that though. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's had a pretty good yeah. career. Yeah. <laughs> I, look, I still do like when, things that aren't as weird, I guess. I, I put my, my socks and shoes on left to right, which isn't, I guess, that weird. And, and, a, and a way for me to reset myself is I just grab grass and I just throw it in the air. So if I'm – and it's not – it's like it'd be at, you know, quarter time or something. So say I feel like I'm not focused and I've had a bad quarter, I need to reset myself, I'll just grab some grass and throw it in the air and then I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm all good. Back to zero. Yeah, that's cool. Ever mid-game, I'll get a stoppage. Oh, I'd be very rare if I did it. Back in the day I probably did, but not now, no. Nah, not the, now. The grass story like – uh, um, before a set shot, sort of a lost art. Yeah, you don't see people doing that anymore. Yeah. Matty Lloyd. Matty was, Lloyd. Matty Lloyd was the pioneer. Yeah. But I mean, that's a superstition as well. I mean, what's really the difference between that and shaving your legs? <laughs> Matty Lloyd played <laughs> half his games at Telstra Dome, but <laughs> yeah, then he had he's still, still trying the grass. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, on that, in a more serious note, so that sounds a little bit mindfulness, like yep. and, and reset. Is that right? Definitely. Yeah. Is that? Yep. Have you, you know, practiced mindfulness? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, mate. I've um. As I said, when I was seven, eight, well, sixteen, I was like I was diagnosed with OCD and um anxiety and and borderline depression and things that I really struggle with and that that stemmed from just my childhood and I touched on mum being a single parent but it was just things that I grew up with not really having much and um I always used to just yeah I just used to worry all the time and when I started to I guess separate myself as a junior I used to you know think that it was because of the things that I was doing so I just it got worse and worse and um, I used to see a psychologist you know, every week for, for a whole year as a 16, 17 year old. And then, you know, I'll get drafted and then you can imagine it just got worse and worse. And um, I used to consume me and I used to, um, you know, just really worry about performance anxiety and, um, you know, people judging me and letting people down. And, um, and then it got a little bit, like it got a little bit better throughout my career at the Giants and then getting traded to Collingwood again peaked because playing for a big footy club and mm. getting judged and um, wanting to not let people down was something that, um, you know, really affected me. And then 2018 was a really hard year for me mentally. I um, you know, openly spoke about stuff that I'd struggled with, but the anxiety side of the games, there was games where I was driving in and, you know, I, I was ringing Kimmy in tears saying I can't play. Um, it's hard. For, I, I don't know how I'm going to get out there and play. And um, I did a double hammy in 2018. I ripped both hammies in half. And um, I remember going into that game it was against Carlton. I was ringing Kim saying, I'm thinking about pulling out. I actually can't play. This is – I just can't do it. I just felt like I was just going to break down when I got there and I feel like it was kind of a blessing in disguise because doing my hamstrings, you know, took me away from the game and, and made me appreciate it a lot more. So from afar with my my sports psych and now my dear, dear friend Jackie Lauder, who's an absolute gun, she now works at Collingwood, coincidentally. She – um. She uh, was enormous for me throughout that period. And, um, yeah, and from then she's been, you know, just the rock for me and someone that I lean on all the time. And, um, you know, I still have my times where I struggle. I, I really do. There was a time in, you know, and I've never really spoken about 2021 final series with with the Bulldogs. Semi-final against Brisbane Lions, probably the worst game I've ever played in my life. Yep. Worst game I've ever played in my life. And, you know, I remember I copped criticism post-game because it looked like I didn't really care. But prior to that game, I didn't – I was on the phone ready to go home. I didn't want to be. We were in a hub. We were in a bubble. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to play. I just flat out didn't want to play. And, and I look back and I wish that I had enough balls to say that I shouldn't play. I should let, you know, someone else come in and play my role because, you know, I'm letting the team down, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, it was something that post that again, I prioritised my, my mental health and um, prioritised my performance and knowing that if I'm not right to play, I'm not going to play. Other than that, um, you know, I've been pretty good largely throughout my career. But, yeah, it's something that I've definitely prioritised. So I was I was looking at some of that stuff. You said I was ready to retire in 20 yeah. So is that – Mate. That, that's how you felt? Oh, mate. I just thought I just want to get away from it because, yeah, I, I just would get so wound up in how I performed and how the team was going. And, um, you know, sometimes it can be perceived externally as a, from a selfish point of view about, you know – Again, disappointed and, and showing that, but it's something that I've always done. I've always shown my disappointment and it's never been about 
me, me, me. It's just more about me being disappointed in myself. It's just me showing it. But externally, it could be seen as, oh, what an arrogant, what a sook, what an arrogant prick. But it's never been about that because, you know, I'd be, I'd be confident to say anyone who would meet me would be, oh, what a nice, caring person who loves his teammates and cares for his teammates, which is what I do. Mm. Um, and I think naturally, as you get older. Um, now that, again, I'm 30, I'm 12 years in the system, you know, all I care about is winning and I don't care about what I do or what all I care about is what I can do for the team. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah, there was definitely times where, you know, I, I can't do this, I didn't want to do this. Yeah, definitely. That, that 21, sorry, Dan, yeah, that, that 2021 prelim, so you win that game, um, you're playing a grand final and you kick three and have 27, <laughs> yeah. right? So how do, you, how do you go from... Like from a mindset yeah. point of view, yeah. Not like, yeah. Like, how, how do you how do you do that? Well, like reflecting on it. Well, it was the so it was the semi final. We 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 travelled to Tassie on the Saturday. Played the that's right. You sure had yeah, a brutal yeah. run. So there was no crowds. You'd been away for eight weeks. On yeah, the, on the right. truck. Yeah. Right? So no, no. So it was twenty twenty one where the AFL said we'll finish the season out with no crowds. Um, yep. And then the final series is getting p- played externally from Victoria because it was yep. the second, um, you know, outburst of COVID. And so we flew on the Saturday with Essendon, played on the Sunday, won the final, stayed in Tassie in, in, in just isolation in Tasmania, um, trained and then flew to Brisbane. And we were treated like, <laughs> if I could talk about how we were treated, it was crazy. It was just going down in elevators one at a time in Brisbane. It was just ridiculous. Yes. Um, but anyway, I just remember... I was just really struggling. I just wanted to be home. I wanted to be around my family. Um, at the time, I pro- like my priority was my was my family, and it wasn't really footy that time. And well, it's, it's understandable, it's but you're away from them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, as I said, I've always been someone who's extremely close, and it's hard to be away. And my mum was struggling at the time with a few things, and knowing I was going to be away from it was really hard. Um, yeah, and I just remember game day on that on that semi final. I just remember thinking, "This is I don't know how I can do this." And I, I went out there and played an abs- the worst game I've ever played. Never mm. played worse than, than what I did. And um, I remember I was just in tears. I was a mess after the game. I was extremely happy for the boys. And and again, one of the great games that I've been a part of. Not that I did anything, but <laughs> um, I just remember getting on the phone to my mum. We're getting on the phone to Kimmy, um, to Dunks. This is you know why I, I love him so much because I've had some you know really deep and meaningful conversations with him, um, getting on the phone to Jackie and and just saying, like, what's important to me? What's my priority? What what would my mum want? What would Kim want? Um, you know, why are you doing this? Just so many questions that I just needed to sit there and answer myself. And it was easy for me after two or three days to answer that. I had a good chat with Bevo as well. He was say this. Yeah, he, he knew, mm. you know, he knew that I wasn't right and he knew, he supported me, supported me. Open, he openly came out to bat for me, um, got – Come the Thursday, I was just in a totally different mindset from when I was, you know, on that Saturday. I went out there and played against Port Adelaide in the prelim and probably up until that point in my Bulldogs career, it was probably my best game that I've played. And it wasn't because, you know, I, I didn't have a heap of the footy. It was just every time I got the ball, I had an influence, tackled hard. I just it was my, my number one pressure game. I was just, I just didn't want to let my teammates down. It was one of the best games I played. And then, yeah, that led into the granny. And yeah, it was just kind of like, it just shows that, you know, because I was kind of getting questioned about my wants and whatnot. It just shows when you're in the right frame of mind, you can go from one week having an absolute stinker to then being able to show my ability and, and then continue that. So, yeah, it was a um, it was a real learning week for me. I'd say it'd be more common than than most people would think. Uh, the no, like the whole the, the getting over that mental barrier of, of people being before a game like I just can't do it, I can't play. Right? Yeah. Has it happened very often where where people actually? go all the way and go, I just like, and then they're laid out because of that. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, I've definitely seen it. I mean. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, I reckon you would have seen it as well. I've seen guys, you can just tell they're not right and mm. um, you've definitely seen it, yeah. Because I guess the, the challenge would be if that, I don't know what they, what coaches or what teams come out and say, or, you know, illness or, or, or whatever, that. but because if they were just to say, you know. Hamstring. Yeah. Well, no, I just mean if they were to say like, oh, mentally not, you know, they're just, they're not able to get up today. Like you'd cop it, It's difficult for Adam to to talk about that given he's still on the list. But like from, from my perspective, like I've seen it happen before and clubs, you know, look after the player as much as possible. But Mm -hmm. I think given where, you know, he's saying that, you know, we're 2023 now or whatever, but I do think there's more understanding in the Mm -hmm. game. Like, Mm -hmm. and people have an acceptance of, of, you know, people, doesn't matter if you're an AFL footballer or if you're an accountant or if you're a plumber yeah. or whatever you are, yep. you can still have trouble like mentally. It's difficult. Absolutely. Like mm, life's absolutely. hard sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I think you probably stay away from it just given yeah. you're still still playing. But like 
That's what happens. Clubs yeah. try their best to look after them. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I want to. I want to go back. So we were going through 2018. So I want to talk about that double hammy. I mean, you got to be. You got to be the only player. It's, done it. it's not funny, but it's funny. No, it is funny. Like, it is funny. You've done both hammies yeah. in the same motion. Yeah. Is that even possible? I mean, have you well, done that? Was it like bang bang, or do they go at the same, same time, time, or the same time? So the it's funny because um, they do hamstring conventions quite often and. For a good two to three years, that was a case study for a, for a lot of it. And this yeah. was not just AFL. This is just all sports in general. So that's pretty cool if I think about it in that regard. You legitimately did both your hammies? Yeah, same time. Yeah. Tendons or hammies? Like- uh, left one was a tendon, so I needed a surgery two days later. I ripped that in half and the right one was um, was a grade three, which was actually put me out longer than the left one because – when they repair it, it's more about the healing process where the right one, you've got to, yeah, you've got to like strengthen build it. it, strengthen it, all that stuff. So I, I still got back in 10 weeks to play in the final series. Yeah. Um, Did, what, do you remember doing it? What, what it felt like? Did it feel like yeah. a shotgun into the Well, I've, I'd never done a soft tissue before. And um, Good. and I just remember taking, I think it was Lockie O'Brien it might have been on the wing. Um, and I remember taking him on because I remember, it's funny how it all works because that was the game where I was mentally not right. Yeah. I didn't want to play. And I remember going into that last quarter because I'd played again, a, not a stinker, but I wasn't that good. And I thought, you know, I've got to do something in this last quarter. And I remember getting the ball and, and typically 90% of players would just get it and probably surge from where I was. But I thought, you know, I'm going to take him on. So I took him on, got around the bend and there was a little, he gave me a bit of a nudge. And because at the time we, we knew the GPS, they looked back, I was running, I think 33 Ks an hour because they could track it. Um, I got pushed as I was at 33 k's an hour. Well, nudged, not pushed. And I started to lose my balance, but the, I should have just fallen over. Instead, I'm trying to keep my balance. Guess and so when I, when I plant my left leg, my knee kind of locks and all the force goes through the hamstring, which is why the left tendon went. And then the right leg plants and then my knee locks and the, obviously bang. I just didn't do the tendon, thank God. But yeah, I just remember thinking, no way. And then because I'm so competitive, I remember – Give me five minutes. I got up. They put me down. I laid in the thing. I'm like, I'm in so much pain. And I got them just massage it out. So let me just try and get back out there. It settled. And then I started doing like ground balls. Let me get back <laughs> yeah. out there. You've torn your hamstring tendon. All I didn't think is I didn't know. So I started doing ground balls and trying to do like strides <laughs> on the side. And in fairness, it wasn't the physios because they're trusting me. So they're yeah. like, well, we said he's, you know. They can't scan he's, he's, straight um, away. No. got a Got a, a cramp. So I was saying I've got a cramp and then, yeah, I um would go from maybe running, you know, a one out of ten pace to a two out of ten pace and it was like, nah, this is hurting. So then I just pulled the pin. You, you're just lying on your back and your, your legs are just like <laughs> oh, flipping. Man, you're doing back, back but you know what? It took, a good, it took a good 24 months to get my speed back, yeah. Really? It was a significant injury, yeah. So oh. that final series I got back for, I was – my top speed would have been 26 k's an hour, which mm. is nowhere near my, my max. Fast. But you get back and play, and that's, mm. that's after hamstring tendon surgery, which is a, it's a big surgery. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's not a six-week injury. It's yeah. eight, 10, 12 yep. weeks. So you get back and you play in the 2018 grand final series. Uh, series yep. Sorry. So qualifying final at Optus Stadium. Yep. Playing that. Yep. Do you remember that game? Of course I do, yeah. So that that's still – I didn't play in that game, so I was watching. That's still the loudest. I've played in a lot of oh, footy and played in yeah. big games. Yep. That was a, Lewis Jetta cut a ball off and snapped it and hit the lead. That's the loudest I've heard a crowd. You've played in front of some big crowds. Do you remember that moment? Three of the biggest crowds. So Collingwood, Richmond that year in the prelim and then yes. that crowd you just mentioned and last year's elimination final, Bulldogs Fremantle. Really? So it's two WA crowds. Really? Yeah, bigger than the grand final Melbourne Bulldogs 221 because that's probably more um, – you know, not not really no, biased. Bi- yeah, yeah. So where, yeah, that was – those two crowds are normal. So that final, yeah, that was – you know, and I thought – I don't know, I just thought in that last quarter we started to get on top and yeah. um, the crowd kind of went quiet for a bit and then as soon as – and as you would know, as soon as there's a, a momentum shift and there's a crowd advantage, I kind of knew, yeah, once once Louis Jetta kicked that goal, yeah, we're in trouble here. But, yeah, unbelievable game to have been a part of. Do you, do you know that Louis Jetta was late to that game because he was playing COD? <laughs> No? So, oh, that hurts even more. He's, he's, he's told this story on the Back Chat podcast right here. And I didn't know this either, but I was a first emergency. Yeah. So, I was extremely disappointed not to be playing. I've been dropped yeah. um, from the last game. So, I was basically rock bottom. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, you talk about how you were feeling. I was, yeah, yeah. when you're talking about it, I was, I was exactly the same. I was yeah. like, I didn't want to go to the footy club. I was first emergency. Yeah. Didn't go to the captain's run because I couldn't get out of bed. I was cooked. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and um, I get a call. It's like, Lewis Jett is not here get your shit together and oh, I was no. like 
I was, I guarantee you, worse than you were. Like, I was really, I could not have played. Like, I could not have played. <laughs> I was just got out of bed. <laughs> so, I'm sitting there and they go, Lewis Jones not here. Anyway, when Jets are sitting here at this table telling a story, I'm like, that's right. I remember this now. Anyway, He's playing Call of Duty. He's in the middle of Warzone or something <laughs> and looked at his clock, realised he was half an hour late. He got in, traffic's cooked. Yeah, he, he, gets can't, out, he can't drive off. He gets, he gets off on the freeway. He jumps the train line. No, he, he walks. He walks into the ground and oh, plays that game yeah. and plays one of the he games of his life. one of the great games. Um, oh, you know what? It's always like that though. Yeah. When you come kind of unprepared, yeah. you want to perform, you always play your better games. Imagine if I'd have played. That would have been dangerous. <laughs> um, so uh, let's talk about grand final. I think it's um, worth it. Another crossover moment in, in our footy careers. So 2018 grand final, your first grand final. What are, your, what are your memories? You yeah. Walk, you walked to the ground. Yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, so it was an unreal final series and then no one really gave us a chance against Richmond in the prelim. You didn't, you, didn't play, you didn't play finals that, uh, the year before. No, in, no, in no. In 2017, yep. Collingwood don't play finals. No. You come all the way, yep. made this epic run. Yeah. Must have been an awesome feeling in that team. Yeah. Well, I think as soon as we lost to you guys, Giants were in a – Red Hot Run, they they smacked the Bulldogs in that first final and they had our number earlier that year. So I think a lot of people gave them a chance. Once we beat them, we were quite, kind of quietly confident and yep. then knowing we'll come up against Richmond, Richmond who at the, the time, yeah, they were the benchmark mm. team of the competition. Um, the best thing about it is no one gave us a chance, which we love because we there was no expectation on us. We just wanted to go out there and perform. And, you know, again, that was one of those games where you just kind of – you know, blur the whole time. Mason, Mason Cox plays a game of his oh, life. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then once we won that, there was so much confidence in the air that, um, you know, there was one team that we didn't want to play and it was probably the Eagles. There was a team we didn't want to play. We watched the game because you guys played Melbourne the next day and we watched it and we mm. were thinking, quarter time, yeah, we're playing the Eagles because you guys were... <laughs> they didn't score a goal the first time. You were destroying them. <laughs> um, and we knew that, yeah, our work was going to be cut out for us. So I just remember the week. I just wanted to appreciate the week. Um you know, just take everything in, knowing that this, you know, might never get this opportunity again. I've just had a double hammy, and I've been able to get back and play. So, um, enjoy the grand final parade, and then, yeah, I just, you know, get out there and, and soak it all up. I got out there extremely early, grand final day. I knew where my friends and family were sitting, so I went up and gave them a hug and spoke to them for a bit, and and then, yeah, the game starts, and it's kind of a blur. I remember the. So I just remember being up five goals to nothing and thinking, sitting on the bench, and I remember I think um, Will, Will Hoskinelli kicked a goal to put us five goals up and yep. it was just, is this really, like are we going to, you know, run on top of them? What's happening here? Everything's going our way. Nothing's going the Eagles' way. The, they had the first shot on goal, which I think Josh Kennedy missed, had another shot, which missed. And I thought, you know, the crowd is um, you know, pretty even, but there's definitely going to be a bias here towards Collingwood because being in Melbourne and, um, and then from there, it was kind of just an arm wrestle. And, yeah, it was, again, just a blur, just a blur. I was thinking about <clears throat> um, moments in that game and things to talk to you about, and you popped into my mind. I don't know if you remember interactions we had on the day. I don't know if you remember. I think, I yeah, do. I think you were, you were on Geordie, were you? Yeah, well, I was on Geordie, but don't worry about it. I want to speak to Geordie about that. I want, oh, okay. you, you, and, you and I, like we specifically – so my teammates talk about – my game. That's the best game I've ever played in my life. Yeah, and you are when, when I when I when I was playing, people used to say that. I said, oh, "Piss off! I have played for fourteen years. <laughs> I must have played at a better game." Now I'm finished. I'm well aware that's it's just game. right at the top, and everything else is a long distant second. Yeah. But in the game, I was in this sort of mode where, like, we were going to win, and I, we were going to win when the game, before the game started. When five goals down, I still thought we were going to win. And I remember having a, literally a chat to you in the middle of the ground. Like this would have would been be, second or third, yeah, yeah, I do remember. And you said something like, I don't know, whatever. Well, you, you were lipping off, I was lipping off. <laughs> and whatever you said, I replied with, I'll fucking see you at the end, at the end of the game. At the end of the game, that's right, right I do remember, <laughs> remember this. Uh, yes. I, and I, don't, I, I talk shit to players, yeah. the, but I specifically remember this because it was almost like we'd sat down at a table and been <laughs> yeah. like, right, we're going to have a chat about this at the end of the game. It was literally grand final, 100,000 people. That's right, because yeah. I was resting forward. No, what happened is I was resting forward and you were you were playing on the resting mid that was going forward. And this is how I remember because you were playing so bloody good. And you were um, just hitting me and Geordie from behind. Yes. And I don't even know. I don't even remember what I said. And I do remember you saying, I'll see you at the end of the game. And um, pretty much we'll win. And I'm like, no, you won't. Yes, <laughs> this is exactly <laughs> no, right. No, you, no, you won't. won't. And then... I kept seeing you. Anytime I saw you, I said, I see <laughs> we'll the win, end of the game, we'll yeah. win. And like, yes. to your credit, thinking about it, you would like, yeah. it was just so strange because it was such a competitive game yeah. and like, you wanted to win, we wanted to win. But like, 
it was almost like we had this thing during that game. Like every time I'd see you, I'd be like, I'll see you after the game. No, and you're like, no, you won't, mate. Oh. Anyway, the game goes how it goes and I'll come back on that. But I remember after the game, yeah. shaking your hand yep. and going, I, said it. Oh, I told you. I told you so. But like, not but arrogant. No hard feelings. No, no. I was like, I told no, you no. that and you were like, yeah, you did, mate. Like, yep. congratulations. See, I was that, like, I see that's the beauty that. of, that's what I love about um, sport is we can be like that out there and then at the end of the game, and I was devastated, mate. I was... Of course. You know, I bought my eyes out for for a good uh, couple of years. No, only for a, <laughs> for a couple. Um, yeah. Only for a couple of hours. But um, I'm sorry, and, and uh, some scars. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 that's fine. But um, after obviously after that, the fact that we were able to, I guess, embrace and you know, well done, mate. It was no hard feelings, and it was um, you know, you were right. You were right. <laughs> that's what you said, and yeah. I was like, it's always stuck with yeah. me, and yeah. I, that's why I've been. I've loved to talk to you about it. See if yeah. you remembered, because I remembered, and it wasn't like. My arrogance. It was no, more like what if, like what, a, like what a genuine moment. Like yeah. it could have quite easily been the other way. Yep. And I would have just the same way gone. Oh, well, you were yeah. right. You said you were. You well, said you were yeah. going to win. The thing is, I would never, I would never, never take anything, anything you said on the field. Like in in those, reg- never take yeah. that personal at all. No. Like it's great. It's banter. It's good. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. I mean, it happened on the weekend. Like there's a couple of times with the Port Boys and bu- us going back at each other. And you know, at the end of the game, we see each other. I was like, yeah, hey, you won. Fuck. Yeah, you won. <laughs> no good. Did um. Where were you when Shade kicked? Like, do you think about it? Do you think about always. this game at all? No. Do you, do you think about it or is it like, what, like, no, no. So I, played a, I played in a losing grand final 2015. Mm. Don't think about it. I literally just put it out my brain. Well, yeah, it's different to the one I lost in Melbourne. I don't think about that one against Melbourne, sorry. I don't think about that one because of the way we lost. Yep. We The game was over 20 minutes ago in the last. Yeah. I think about this one a lot because it's the closest I've been and plus the way in the game was played. And, I always see that it's regarded as the best game of um, pretty much all time. It's always voted as right up there as number one or two. And I always, yeah, I, I quite often think about it. I quite think about um, what could have been different. And I remember the whole play building up to Sheed, obviously taking the mark and kicking the goal where I you, was. You kicked it into the forward line. Yeah, I remember Geordie was running away from the ball and I was kind of hoping he came back at it and I just kicked it as long as I could. And McGovern made one of the great plays as, as a defender. And then his kick was even better. And then mm. Liam Ryan obviously took that great mark on Tom Langdon, who hasn't, who hadn't been outmarked the whole final series, <laughs> was was playing unbelievable. And then obviously the kick to Sheed, and not like I remember the play, do I? But yeah, <laughs> I, um, I remember the play and um, illegal shepherd. Or? Absolutely, no, nah, no, nah, yeah, it was. I look back, no, I don't. I think in those moments it's hard to call. Maybe if you know the team's up by ten goals, maybe call it. But in those moments it's hard to call it because you see him knock it called and you see him get called. So. You know, I wish it was called because it could have been a little bit different. But, you know, we just shouldn't have let you guys back into the game. We're up by five goals. That's mm. how I look at it. I think we should have we should have been able to continue that momentum. What I think really hurt us is the goal that we allowed at the end of the first quarter. I think it was like a dribble along the ground where it was kind of a fluke goal. Yeah. It wasn't really – it was like off the boot of – it was real. I mean, it yeah. might have been Rioli. Like yeah. the bottom yeah. of his shoe. Yeah, literally. And it was – if that was a point, we go – five goals rather than go up because I think you guys kicked another goal just prior yeah, to that. Two in the last minute. Mm. And I think if they weren't allowed, sorry, if that didn't happen, we would have been, yeah, a lot I more agree. confident. Oh, and we would have been, you know, yeah, and you guys going five goals down and yeah. haven't scored a goal. Yeah. So there's time. moments in the game where mm. you just like, yeah, but I'm proud, mate. I'm, I, I've got my grand final jersey hung up. I'll always be proud of being able to get back and play in that game. Again, I'll talk about um, I just mentioned, you know, being one of the great games that the, our sport has ever seen and people regard it as one of that. And quite often you get people talk about, you know, what a game that was for both sides. It's something that I'm proud of and I'll always be proud of that. Mm. One thing I um, sort of learned in the last year or so is that the team that loses the grand final still has the, like, the dinner, mm. the night of the grand final. What was that like for you guys? Um, oh, it was, a, it was quite sombre in the rooms afterwards, but then give us, you know, half an hour, everyone – you know, teared up, had their tears and their loved ones. We all got together and then as soon as you have a beer or so, it's pretty good from there. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it wasn't too bad. It, we had all our friends and family there and, you know, I said I'll, I'll, I'll say that it's one of the great nights that I've ever had, one of the great nights. I've ever, I can only imagine winning one. Mm. can only imagine what that would be It's like. actually – you drink – I've done both. Uh, you, you you have more fun – well, not more fun, but you get more pissed after yeah. losing. Yeah, yeah. You, like, carry on you more when you've lost. Whereas, yeah. like, winning, you just, like, like – Well, you've got, got a lot more commitments, don't you? Yeah, you've but, you, do a lot more but it's more and... like – mate, it's just relief. Like, you, you, you're chasing a flag, right? And yeah. it's like we don't have to bounce around that. Like, yeah. you want you've, – you've played in two losing grand finals. You've played in losing, uh, losing prelims, prelims, winning prelims, right? Like, 
I'd assume you can say it for yourself, like that's what you're chasing, right? That's Mate, what it's the only reason I'm playing now. Yeah. I, as I said, I think about, I've mentioned 218 that I wanted to retire. Mm. Um, and I think back why I do it. And, and yeah, it's the whole reason I play. And, you know, when I knew that I was um, having to leave Collingwood, my, you know, my first thought straight away was, oh, where's a team that I think is capable of winning? And that's obviously the Bulldogs. And we came really close in 21. And I still think, you know, our best footy is as good as anybody's. We just need to play consistently that brand of footy that we need to play and, and, and bring um, our best, which is at the moment, again, we're doing that inconsistently. But, yeah, I, I thoroughly believe in the group that we have and, and it's the whole reason why I play. It's the only reason why I play. I just want to win a flag. Yeah. That, that, that trade from Bulldogs to Collingwood, I mean, it's different from the GWS one, mm. right? Mm. How, how did you feel at the time? How do you reflect on it now? Yeah, it, it was extremely difficult for me. It was... Um, you know, something that I didn't want to do and, um, you know, I've been open about my feelings at the time, um, you know, about going through that, you know, month or so prior to the season finishing and moving. Um, once I came to the realisation that I had to move, even though I didn't want to, um, you know, it made it a little bit easier to then, you know, narrow in on where I wanted to go, what team I wanted to play for, um, you know, meet the pl people that I wanted to meet. Um, and, yeah, that narrowed me down to the Bulldogs. I never wanted to... You know, leave Victoria, and there was talk about potentially moving to Queensland. So you're, so you're part that's of Kimmy is, yeah, plays there, right? So Kimmy and um, Kimmy plays. She's the captain of the Queensland Firebirds, and she's a, she's the star of the family. You're the second. You're <laughs> she's the, second the star of the family. family. I think Georgie, our little daughter, who's three now, she's probably going to be so the star. So you're number three. <laughs> yeah, I'm number family. three now. Um, but um, yeah, there was talk about going there externally, but that was never an option for me because, you know, I kind of contradict myself from five or six years earlier in wanting to come home and play in front of my family and friends, which is what I still want to do, mm. and that's Melbourne. And um, so I never wanted to leave Victoria. And, um, again, I, I looked at the Western Bulldogs straight away and thought, yeah, this is the team I want to play for. You know, you wanted to play with Bonds, wanted to play with Libba, Jackson McRae, Aaron Norton, these guys that are going to be stars and are stars of our competition. Obviously, Joshie Dunkley met him and, and took a liking to him straight away and, um, you know, since then became inseparable. And... Um, yeah, once I knew that I was moving, it was an easy thing frame of mind for me to get into and be like, okay, this is a new challenge for me, new chapter. Um, you know, my first day at the footy club, it was extremely nervous. You know, I didn't know, you know, what these people thought of me and, um, you know, I'd got a message from every player and, and, and they expressed their love and excitement for me to be there, but that was nice. But still, I walked in, I was extremely nervous. You know, you got to deal with new physios, new weights program, just things that you're so comfortable with. And, yeah. you know, you get to the age of 27, 28, you kind of know what works for you. And then you go to a new club and everyone has their own own opinions and there's new opinions at the Western Bulldogs. So I've kind of had to, you know, learn my ways again. And um, But it was it was a good time, very good time in my life those early years. And now that, you know, I feel like I'm a Western Bulldogs player through and through and a, a team that I'm proud to play for. How, how's that, how hard's that been, being away from your partner, your child? Oh, surprisingly not that hard. I think the hardest thing was just the COVID stuff. That was the hardest stuff. Early days it was fine because the first bit of 220 – COVID wasn't around. So I was able to go up to Queensland and come back and, um, you know, it was, um, you know, it wasn't that hard because it wasn't like we're doing it for no reason. It was something that we both wanted to do. I never wanted to stop her from playing professional sport because she'd sacrificed so much for me. She sacrificed 12 months of her body um, for Georgie and, um, you know, something that I'll always appreciate. She was only 27 when – or 26 when she gave birth, then turned 27 and was in the peak of her um, – you know, at the peak of her powers and always wanted to go back and play for the Firebirds because that's where she initially played. Um, and, um, yeah, it was something that we spoke about all of 220 because she was in the in the COVID hub with me in, when I was playing for Collingwood and something we spoke about. And, um, yeah, we, we quickly came to the decision that, yeah, let's um, let's let's chase this for you. She wanted to be the captain. She became the captain, you know, became the, um, you know, won the best and fairest, won the, the centre of the year. She came out and had an incredible season. Wow. Um, and it's just an incredible human but an incredible athlete. She, she, she motivates me. Um, we motivate each other. It's, it's cool being able to talk to her about her sport and she talks about obviously footy and, um, yeah, it's just it's you must just be proud incredible. Of, you must be proud of what she's done. That's oh, incredible. Mate, eh? uh, unbelievable. For her to put herself, her body through what she put her, herself through to get back because she she could have came back and played. So Georgia was born in March. The season didn't start that COVID year till same as the AFL, which was about May. 
And she literally could have played. If she was on a roster, she could have played two months after giving birth. That's just how incredible she is. And, um, yeah, I I take great pride in in, in being able to stand next to her and um, support her. Yeah, she's uh, she's incredible. Sounds more impressive than the two hammies, to be honest. Oh, mate. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's incredible, mate, what she does. Yeah. But I've I've had great support. As I mentioned, I mentioned Jackie. I mentioned, you know, my my sister-in-law who'd been in Melbourne with Kim and I. She's been a great support for me, my... You know, my, my own siblings, just, yeah, great support for us um, when we're apart to, you know, really, um, you know, not get homesick or, or not get, um, you know, uh, worried about being away from each other or suffering anxiety being away from each other. They've been great support for us. So I'll support her thoroughly. Grand final at the Optus Stadium here in Perth. Does it does it, does it mean Optus Stadium hold, you know, it's not a graveyard, but mm. it's got good memories still? Or just- yeah, yeah, great memories. Just because of where we came from, we... We had a bad run into that final series. Yeah. We lost three in a row, gave our spot up in the top four and they had to do it the hard way. And you had to come back in the team. You, you did your ankle, didn't you? I did, yeah. yeah. I did a Cindy. Missed a Cindy with a bad bad one. Missed about 10 weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, came back and, and then I just touched on, you know, going through some mental stuff that semi-final. So I look back on that time and extremely proud, extremely proud. I wish we won the game. I mean, we were up by four goals, pretty much four goals with – 10 minutes to go on the third and it's hard to believe we ended up losing by 70 or whatever it was, but it just shows how good Melbourne were. Yeah. Um, but no, I look back fondly. It was a great time. I remember – I called that game and I remember sitting there watching and I'd picked you blokes just because I'd rated the way – I just I just saw what you bloke – it looked like you were tight mm. and, mm. you know, that's on me. You lose by 70. But, <laughs> I, but I, I remember watching and when, you, when you're up at that halfway through the third, I just – I remember kind of probably what you thought on the bench in 18. I thought – Fuck, these blokes are going to do it. Mm. I actually didn't think you were going to win, but I thought, oh, get around you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, and then it just it just turned so quickly. Yeah. Right. And it's, yep. um, I don't know. I don't know. Not much you can do sometimes in footy. Those are. No, well, I, I just think um, momentum and, and the way their midfield was started to click after that first goal. I think Harms hit Bailey Fritz again. I remember these plays. I think he hit Bailey Fritz when we we're up by three goals who then kicked the goal and then they just went like bang, bang, bang. Mm. They kicked like five in a row in a five-minute period to then hit the lead at three quarter time. And when when you give Christian Petrarch, Clayton Oliver, Max Gorn, you know, the opportunity to do that, Bailey Fritz up forward, it's just you're not going to stop them. And I think, yeah, we – I wouldn't say we played our grand final the week before, but um, we were definitely gassed. We were absolutely gassed by that three-quarter time and Melbourne were full of run and – yeah, they were just far too good for us in the end. You've you've played on some amazing coaches like mm. Sheedy, uh, Choco Williams, Buckley, yep. Bevo. Bevo. Like that that's Big a hitters. that's a resume. But I mean, yeah. of those guys, like clearly they're all great coaches. But um, looking at that, I would love to have played under Bevo. I don't know if you can speak to him a little bit. Yeah, no, like Bevo's like been a, enormous. Like a guy who's got your back. That's what I was about to say. As, as I said, my first thought is when I when I think about when I was really struggling and I had that chat with him and, mate, he, he goes into bat for his for his players and sometimes he probably does it a bit too much and gets on the bad side of the media and whatnot. <laughs> but um, that's how much he loves his players and he's proud. And, um, you know, that was a massive drawing card for me as well when I met Bevo, um, you know, the first time when I th- – thought about coming to the Bulldogs, um, you know, I, I felt that love and care for not only me but for my family and for Kim and, um, you know, the thing I love about Bevo is when we talk about, you know, when he comes up and chats to me, it's always the first conversation is about Georgie and, and Kim and how they're going and, you know, you know, we might not necessarily be winning or we could be, you know, winning, whatever it may be. He's always – that's always the first thing we're talking about and, and how I'm going. So, yeah, he's a um, – he's, he's been a, a great mentor for me and – um, you know, I think each coach brings out different strengths. He um, you know, he always tries to stay ahead of the game and he's not afraid to move players around, which is, um, you know, something that I've, I've definitely had to get used to being able to play different roles. I know la- last year I played a bit a bit off halfback, which is something I'd never done before. The backman. Yeah, halfback, which is, um, you know, I think a lot of the times he, he liked attacking halfbackers. That's probably why I play down there because it's definitely you're not, not putting me down there. You're not a dower defender. defender, are you? No, nah, I remember going back with a flight one time in my first game against Buddy was coming the other way and I was like, whoa, I can't do this, but. Um, um, no, nah, I've um, I, I appreciate playing underneath him. It's, it's those time, it's, it's those things where you know you appreciate a lot more when you're done. So I look back on my time with Choco and, and Leon Cameron. They're yeah, two so great left coaches that I um, 
You know, I owe a lot to because of oh, being the person and player that I am now. You know, Bucks was a great carer and lover for me and, and supported me through some of my tough times. And, and I look back fondly on my relationship with him. And, you know, again, through those 2018, 19 years, I wouldn't have got through if it wasn't for his love and care. And, um, yeah, I, I, I look back fondly on those relationships. So it'd be something, you know, when I'm mm-hmm. done, hopefully in – Four or five years' time, I look. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> could be contract time. Yeah, so hopefully, ten, yeah, ten boys, yeah. yeah. I, uh, I could look back and appreciate Bevo. Um, did you appre- talk about appreciation? Do you appreciate did, yeah. this Western Bulldogs? I appreciate jumper? both. Yeah, the the, yeah. the ochre. Um, this this is one of the worst slash best jumpers really? you'll ever find. This did is, you wear it? Is that yours? No, that's oh, David, no. David Wirrapunda signature on there. This, yeah, this okay. is this is not mine, but so I wish I got to wear it. Very generous. That was in the nineties. Yeah, that was right. proper nineties. Oh, so I could swear I've seen it during the two thousands because I was. Um, it might have been early two thousands. Oh one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Chris Judd was my favorite player growing up. Carlton uh, and West Coast. and He would have worn that. I used to watch West Coast games and I reckon I've seen him in that jersey. Um, I want to finish with this one unless you got anything else, no. Dan. So you met all these great coaches, blah, 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 and you spoke about this man, Josh Dunkley. So um, friend of the family here at Backchat, Josh Dunkley, great episode we had last year. If you want to listen to that, head back uh, to one of the episodes. Just type in Josh Dunkley Backchat, you'll find it. <laughs> Good way of doing it. A bit of a bromance happening here. Yeah, and yeah. I've got to say, ads and dunks, um, look, I liked it when you were both on the same team, <laughs> but I've seen what you're doing on opposing teams. Yeah. I just think it's so unique. Like yeah. having two guys play on opposing teams. You played against each other a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Like I just think it's such a cool dynamic and it's awesome what you guys are doing. Like there's no, no one else doing that really. I mean, no. Coxie's got his thing going on, but um, how's that relationship with Dunks yeah. and now your media stuff? You're yeah, thanks, doing? man. I appreciate that. We, yeah. it's, it's great coming it's from cool. you because you guys are killing it as well. We oh, love we listening go. to Just settle down. Settle no, down. Yeah, do. settle, um, settle down. What else? What else do you like about us? <laughs> How relaxed and caring and loving <laughs> yeah, you guys are. Like coming here, we yeah. sit down here, we get some waters we'll, we'll, and we we'll chill. The, and... We've got the payments <laughs> later on. Yeah, perfect. Um, but no, it's, um, as I touched on, he was enormous for me when I first moved over. He went through his own stuff initially at the time. Um, and we kind of, yeah, took a liking to each other and um, a lot of similarities and whatnot. And, yeah, I just I just love the guy very much. He's such a caring human being and his family. I love him dearly. And um, you touched on how unique it is. And, and that's something that we, we want it to be. We want it to be for people looking in and, and seeing us as players, but more so as people and, um, you know, what we talk about. Yeah, we talk about footy, but we talk about our own experiences. Our experiences away from footy is something that I think people appreciate. Um but, like, the insight, mate, like, because I was watching that game, I, I watched his stuff, and I was just watching specifically, like, how yeah. I was wondering how you're going to react because yeah. I know you're great, mate. Yeah, yeah. And you were going at him hard. <laughs> I was you were carrying on like a pork I was chop. trying. <laughs> and I was watching him. Yeah, he was yeah, laughing. Yeah, you, were, yeah. you had your angry face on. Yeah, I was trying. To. I, um, <laughs> he's a I, beast. I said to him, oh, mate, he's a gun. He was good that first quarter too. He wanted to play really well, which he did. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're extremely competitive. Like, we're always competitive with anything we do. Yes. Um, and I'm glad at the moment I'm one nil up on him. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. it stays that way and it continues to stay that way. But um, yeah, I um, you know I wanted to give it to him as much as I could because I just know that he just love it. Yes. He would just love to, you know, love to talk about it afterwards. He stayed at my joint um, the next night and um, we went to the pub and you know had a beer and and, and watched a bit of uh, watched the footy and, and had some dinner and it was just funny. Being able to sit there and talk to it, talk that we actually played against each other, and yeah. um, it was quite a surreal moment for us. And, and I know it sounds funny because we've only known each other for two years, but it feels like we've known each other our whole life. And whenever we think about doing plans and, and things we want to do in the future, it's always about oh, how can we do this for each other and support each other. And yeah, I, I look, you know, now I watch all the Brisbane games, I, I watch them all and see how he goes, and send him a message prior to the game, wishing him the best. Message him afterwards, he does the same for me, and. Not sure how, if he wants us to win all the time, but oh, he wants me to play well, which is um, which is something I appreciate. But yeah, um, I'm really enjoying the podcast, and um, you know we we get um, you know great receptions from it. Tommy Sheridan, who does his Oz American Aces podcast, we're underneath that bracket. He does a, an a incredible job for us. Um, producing it and, and supporting us in that regard. And right. um, the whole podcast world is really exciting. Mason, you mentioned Mason Cox does yeah. his and um, I think everyone is doing a really good job. So we're loving it. Did um, it's good, Dunks or did Dunks ever let you into his like ask this. Your utopia home rehabit- rehabilitation centre? It sounds like he's got some yeah. sort of situation going What's on. Going on? Well, well, I tried to go <laughs> I tried to go one up on him. So really? I went and bought my own sauna and uh, yeah, uh, I've got nice. like a hot, hot cold plunge pool at home. Um, my gym, I've spent, you know, I've spent 
a lot. Know, almost 100k on my gym at home oh, over oh over 10 boy. years on oh boy on, plus, plus, on uh, <laughs> of of AFL payments and whatnot. But yeah, yeah. I I, pro- I prioritise my recovery and and being one up on dunks. I need, I reckon we get like some sort of membership. We get like yeah. when we're in Melbourne, we go to dunks. Or something. Well, well, when we when the boys when we're going through all the COVID you know stuff, boys would always joke about going to dunks his house or my house because we've got a great setup. Um, yeah, it's unreal. When oh. NFL season comes around and I'm up every Monday watching at four in the morning, I set up all the screens in my room because I've got a. You, you know, do you do that? Mate, it's my love. It's yeah. my love so, away from. I used to rock up Monday morning to the club. What are you so? What are you doing, mate? I've been up since two in the morning. NFL fantasy, that. mate. It's my, mate, my number, one, number one thing in the world. Who do you go fantasy. for? Who do you get out? It's stuff that footy career. Who yeah. do you go for? So my favourite player is Derek Henry. No, who's your team? I don't care your favourite player. Well, players. that's what I'm getting to. So Derek Henry, Tennessee Titans. So that's why. That's how I fell in love with the game. So I'm I'm quite fresh. I've, I've been following maybe for five six years now. But here's my favourite player. So Tennessee Titans is my team. Right. So they're not overly – they haven't been – well, they've been okay in their division, but as soon as they play a playoff, they're terrible. So a That's little bit terrible. like my team, Dan. I know you're not a massive NFL. So when I it's got into Cowboys. the game, Adrian Peterson was the Derrick Henry of the time. He's gone. So I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think I'm going to have to message you when I'm watching yeah, Red He Zone. just made the Texas Hall of Fame. Just got inducted. That. I've seen that. that. But my NFL is my life. So right, I, was well, in, I was in eight fantasy teams last year. Mate, <laughs> mate, don't laugh too much. I was in six. Eight. Yeah, there you go. I was in eight <laughs> of them. Right. Only one, one of them, though. Right. Just slapping. note this down. We're starting an NFL podcast next I year. I would happily start an NFL Done. podcast. Done. Done. Uh, before we finish, not social media, social media. This is where the fans <laughs> – yeah, you like that. I thought you would. Social media where the fans get to ask you the questions. Dan and I, you've heard yep. enough from us. This is for the fans. Yep. Liv Flora. Uh, what's it like working with Dr. Zimmerman? I heard he's a very unique character. Also, uh, who's the best <laughs> physio and or trainer you've had and what makes them good? What's Dr. Zimmerman? Wow. Do you know who this is? Yeah, he's, he's our doc at right. Bulldogs. He's been around for ages. Yeah, he was um, – He's kind of a cold figure down there when I went down there. He was, he's got the moustache. He's a moustache guy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. He's, he actually is quite unique. He, he's not like most doctors I've come across. He's just always lively and up and about. But, Best um, physio and or trainer you've had. I've, we've never had that's that question. Hard, I, I, I just think back to ones I got along with most, and I got along with a lot of them, but ones I, I spoke to most, probably Leroy at the Giants. Uh, he was a – he worked in the NBA for – Two years. So we used to talk um, NBA all time. Really and great. now I've got to give a shout out to Chris Bell, Scott, yes. so also, they're, they're now our physios they're now. At, they're don't name names because they need to at, uh, at the Bulldogs. Uh, links underscore you. What were your thoughts when you heard Josh Dunkley wanted to leave the dogs? Uh, oh, well, I kind of was talking to him throughout the year and I knew that he was always kind of talking about it. But when he initially announced it, oh, it was – two weeks post-season, I think it was three weeks post-season. Yeah, it was hard, but I just want to support him. So that's all I care about. It's the human side of things coming to it, so I just want to support what he wanted to do. Very good. Bailey Berry, 16. Uh, your favourite shop at Southland and why are you there Southland. so much? Southland's my favourite store. So, well, shops. So I live just – it's like a Westfield shopping centre. Right. right. And, like, my downtime, I'll just go Southland and get a coffee. Hang out. Oh, I'll just go to the shop, maybe <laughs> – you know, go. There's an NBA store, an NFL store there. I go there nearly every every time I go to Southland. I go there. It sounds Southland. like you've been sighted there regularly. Yeah. Bailey Berry, I can see you all the well, time. Well, maybe because he he must always be there when I'm there. So maybe the question That's is true. back at yeah, Bailey why Berry. Are you there, Bailey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good. Um, we've got the rituals and superstitions. What about Campbell? Su- oh, we've got that. It's asking, yeah, is it true you shave your legs while you have a bath and watching the Sims before each game? Used to, not yes, anymore. Covered, not anymore. Uh, Still take a shave though. Uh, Air removal now. <laughs> and we finished that one and two. Um, that's pretty much done and dusted. Yeah. But we always ask one and I've just written on mm. – yeah. Do you this remember? is from the egg man. Um, how do you like your eggs? Uh, oh, I'm pretty pedantic with my eating. Good. So um, I um, – what do you, what do you, what More calories and yeah, yeah. take pride in that. So poached eggs. What do you, what do you poached like, removing is removing the yolk or something? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, I just go there. <laughs> That's great. Egg whites No, I just go the – well, I used to, but now I just I try and go the, the healthiest version of eggs, which is poached eggs. Poached or boiled. So Ooh, so boiled. poached – no, no, no. So I don't go boiled. You're not going to a cafe. No, no. no eggs, poached. <laughs> so poached is my – is typically my option, but I yeah I've been a bit slack in going the scrambled egg choice. Oh, but poach is my option. Settle down, Adzi. Give All the right. um, give the slow cooked egg a try as well. That's the, good. Um, yeah, sixty five degree egg. How long does that take? 
Oh, uh, well, you, don't, you go to a cafe to get it. You don't want to do it at home. Okay. Uh, that's it, mate. Had fun? I did. I love it. Backchat Thank double you. underscore on socials. That's where you find all the stuff there. Backchatpodcast.com.au. want to say a big thank you to our patrons, our VIPs. You can get discount codes across our network of sponsors. Fleet Network. Thank you very much. Backchat powered by Fleet Network. For of course. Season 2023. Swimply, Whippersnapper Whiskey, Margaret River Roasting Co., Blue Bet, Shelter Brewing Co., Leadable Cameras. You might need to get some more sponsors over on your... Where are you? Backchat Podcast. Thanks very much. Thank you.